right guys and welcome back to ask nk so today is another episode of tutorial tuesday but it is going to be a little bit different the reason is because i have gotten some comments based on the video that i talked about 3d studio max and my reaction and a lot of people are asking what are the big differences when it comes to rigging and now i'm going to state this out there there is no big difference when it comes to rigging for any app as far as you understand the underlining principles and fundamentals of rigging it is going to be the same for you in basically every app so because of this i would go ahead and just simply teach show and also do a little bit of a versus video comparing 3d studio max versus maya so you can understand which of these apps does certain things better than the other this is the only thing i would consider as difference when it comes to using apps maybe some could be faster some could be less faster and i think that's just about it so i'm going to start off by talking about some very basic stuff and we'll go ahead and actually play around this so everyone is going to get a complete understanding of how this thing works by default i've seen a couple of versus videos there's just a bunch of people putting videos and putting a song under i wouldn't like to do that since i would like to always teach one or two things in every single video i make so things which we're going to talk about consist of parenting sets blend shapes attributes joints and constraints all of these things exist in both apps and it would make a lot of sense if everybody gets a ground zero idea of how they all work And so with 3D Studio Max open, let's go ahead and talk about how you can do your modular parenting here. So there are two ways you can do this. First of all, you can go ahead and make a selection here. Click on this link button, click, drag and click to the parent. And this way you have automatically linked these two objects together. Other ways you can do this is you can pick the cylinder directly from here and drag it right on top of the box. And there you can go ahead and link these two objects together over to maya how you can do this is the same so let's say you have these two objects together and you can just simply select this one drag and drop right inside this and you have this parented another way you can do this is select the child select the parent and press p on your keyboard and that way you have this object uh, parented or you can simply select the child select the parent go over to edit and parent and this way you can parent an object to another object but let's say you have a controller and you want to use that controller to drive a certain attribute of another object you can use the reaction manager to actually do this in maya it is almost the same it is actually the same but then let's go ahead and talk about 3d studio max and we'll also jump through and talk about this in maya so if you want to get this done with a scene like us what we want is once this ball goes over to this part this should go all the way up so let me just undo this it should go all the way up and come down so i'm going to grab this object and i'll go over to animation down reaction manager and there you have it so with reaction manager open i'll make this the master object so i'm just going to click and say i want this transform to actually work towards the position of the x all right so we want this to actually happen when it's going x and the next thing which we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and simply click here and say i want to add a slave at this point i would like to actually explain something if you have multiple objects that you want to use as slaves you would my best advice is don't go ahead and start adding them individually you can select these multiple objects and simply click on add selected so what i'm going to do is just simply click on slave click here transform and we want to transform this i guess to z i guess that's what it's transforming to let's just actually cross check that one more time so i'm just going to go ahead and select this all right so it's transforming to z let's move this all right so it's transforming to z now once this is done the next thing which we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and click on create mode within this create mode we want to create certain states now this state is what will drive every single object all right so since i have this i would go ahead and create a a state so we have one state that is created then the next state which i want is once this ball or once this sphere is around here all right so i'm just going to move this towards this part around here i would like this object to go all the way up all right 
and I'm going to click here. So this has automatically created another state for us. Now, this simply means that at this point, if I turn this off, if I start sliding this object backwards, you can see what we're having here. If we slide it towards this part, you're seeing what we're having here. So you can use this as a controller for different things. You can use it as controller for your blend shape. You can use it as controller for the IK switch for your character. Depending on what you want to do, this is how you go ahead and do it directly here in 3D Studio Max. It still doesn't limit it to just one single position. Depending on how much you want to play around, you can simply use this to actually get it done. And a good thing for 3D Studio Max is you get to see the graph and you can actually select the graph and play with it anyhow you want it. Right? So you can choose to say at a certain point you don't want things to work out that way. You can play with this graph and actually make good use of it all right so let's go over to maya and see how maya actually deals with something like this so i'm opening up maya and we have exactly the same set here and for you to actually start doing this in maya you need to switch to the animation menu set and with the animation menu set all ready to run i'm going to go ahead and simply go to key within key i'll go over to set driven key and click on set now with this there or my has automatically picked this one as the driven object next thing which i'm going to do is select the sphere and make it the driver at any point in time i want to translate this by z i would like this other object to actually translate by y remember in 3d studio max we created the first state so you can see the first state and there is a second state so i'm going to go ahead and grab this object and i'm going to make the first state and the next thing which i'm going to do is just position this all the way here and position this all the way to this part and then click on key one more time to create the second state so right now if i start sliding this backwards you can see it is quite the same thing now the big differences between these two is when you're working with 3d studio max you actually get the opportunity of selecting one particular attribute at a given time here in Maya you have a much more variety of selecting several attributes and get those attributes driven by one particular thing at a given time say for example since we've set the first key let's say I want at any given time this object is here I may want this uh, particular object to rotate so let's have this here and say we would like this object to rotate by X and once we just move to this other side we can come through and actually let's go over to the channel editor pick this object by x and slightly rotate this object and click on key so what happens here is we would be able to just simply have this sort of animation happening all right in 3d studio max you have to do each of these things individually and it might be a bit more time taking So we treat the Studio Max open and we have this uh, sphere selected. I would like to add a certain kind of attribute to our object or parameter as it is called in 3D Studio Max. So I'm going to go over to the modified panel, which is what we have here. Then the next thing which I would like to do is to go over to animation and go down to here where I have the parameter editor. So if you click on the parameter editor, you would be presented with something like this that you can use to actually make presets and use them. So I'm going to set my parameter to float. And if you want any other form of parameters, you can come through and you know select them from here. And now once you have that, I can set this to roll and then set the amount of size which i want so i can make this about 100 and maybe i wanted to start from zero and get all the way to 100 i would like to set my defaults to that or maybe i can just simply set this to 10 i think 10 is fine and i can also set this to 10 and also choose to leave this at zero i'm going to align this by the left so that it stays around this part and once i'm done with this i'm going to click on apply and once I click on apply, you understand that we begin to see a custom attribute at this point. Other things that we may want to do, knowing fully well that our size is set to 10, is we would like to actually go ahead and edit this. So if you click on edit and come through to this part, you know, select this particular object. And I go ahead and make this about 80. And we want this to just be about, uh, about 10. And we can simply do that, hit on apply and simply close. 
right now we have that parameter and how are we going to use it now for you to be able to use this parameter that you've just created in 3d studio max that is where something that is called the wire parameter comes in play so for the wire parameter you need to actually grab this object and then rewire this to something else i'm going to do that by simply coming over to the animation tab so let's go ahead and close this because we're done with that all right let's just test this it's working so we can do that by coming over to the animation tab then go over to the wire parameter and click on wire parameter so it's going to ask us what parameter do we want to wire from this object to another object all right so for this particular object we want to wire a custom attribute that is called role to this object and what we want to wire in this particular object could just simply be like uh let's say the rotation to the z-axis where is the z-axis again all right so we're just going to wire this to that point if you want these two to actually interact and control each other you click on this button if you want only the row to control this one you click on this button and vice versa now i have this done i'm going to hit connect and we're having that there I'm going to simply close this and if you notice once I start changing this parameter you see that our object starts rolling automatically so now that we've done this for 3d studio max let's jump right into Maya and see what Maya has to show for itself so we have Maya opened here and I'm just going to simply actually close this and let's test this if it's working all right so this is working and we like it so much then the next thing which we want to do is create a parameter for this how you can create parameter or attribute as it is, as it is called in Maya is pretty pretty simple so just right here you're going to notice that we have various nodes that are here and i can just simply click on edit and come down here and say i want to add an attribute you can still click on the attribute editor but here we just want to add an attribute so clicking on this attribute all right i'm just going to drag this right back into the screen i would go ahead and name this role same name we gave uh, the other object and we're going to make this a float we're going to simply keep this at zero and maybe make this 10 and make the default zero you can still see other stuff that you can control from here and a cool thing with maya is from here you have other particles that you can use to drive any single thing here and you also have controls that you can use directly from there so now i have this here actually i think i should just make that roll one more time and just simply set this to zero and set this to 10. I'm going to click on add and there you have it. You're going to notice we have this role here. So the big question is how do you actually tie this together? So we're going to use the connection editor to actually tie this to this big rectangular object that we have in our scene. Okay, so we're just going to go over to windows, general, and connection editor with connection editor selected next thing which we need to do is grab this ob other object and reload right remember in the previous time where we had to use the set driven what we did was super simple it was add the driver and then the driven so now i'm going to scroll all the way down to this part i have roll and i need to find the rotation i need for this and i guess this should be by z so i'm just going to scroll all the way down and find rotate and rotate by z so with this done all i need to do is just grab this particular object and then i can scroll this and you can see it if you have issues with the numbers that you have here you can always come through and just go over to edit drag this right back just like we can do in 3d studio max and i can set this all the way to 100 and simply close this and right now once i have this and use my middle mouse button to rotate you can see i can rotate this particular object quite quite similar quite quite similar so if you're working in either apps it is something that is very easy for you to just you know grasp and understand how the both of them works next off we will be talking about joints and constraint so why are we not talking about blend shape we're not talking about blend shape because i'm keeping the best for last so we're talking about joints and constraints and we will not actually dwell on them because they are super simple stuff So a new window right here and let's do the same thing for 3D Studio Max 2020, a new window right here and close. All right. So 
the joint here in Maya is a single joint so you don't necessarily need to have multiple uh, joint setup so all you need to do to create joint is go over to skeleton and you click on create joint and you can create multiple joints if you need a pick joint creation tool you can use the human IK and just simply click on create skeleton and automatically is going to create a skeleton for you if you want to resize the skeleton at any given time just simply drop this to 0 0.1 and drop it by 0.1 again and it's going to resize this based off the unit of your scene so this is how you can quickly and simply create your joint setup here so now that we've seen how we can make this particular uh skin setup or the joint setup knowing fully whether maya doesn't have multiple uh amateur setups just the single joint system uh we would look at the constraints and you can see all of the constraints we have here consist of parent points orient scale aim uh pole vector and you know so on and so forth and if you want to create a joint directly here or you want to create a joint setup in 3d studio max you need to go over to create and all the way down to where we have systems and you can see the you know the bones ik joint right so you can use this to actually create joints the way you want and at any point in time if you right click you're done creating this joint. My big problem with 3D Studio Max is they just have a lot of things that exist, but most of them are either obsolete or people don't get to use them that much. And yet, you know, these things are still there for everyone to play with. You can still create your joints from here as well. I forgot to tell you guys those. You can still create your joints directly from here. And then your biped also exists here. So for the biped, I'm just going to click and drag and create this biped so the biped is also another form of joint creation i guess this is the second form of joint creation that made its way to 3d studio max after the initial joint and the last type of joint creation or the last type of amateur creation that exists in 3d studio max is called cut so a good way to actually get this to work is if we go over to i guess here and click down you have to find the cut object and from here you can start creating your uh, cuts so we can choose uh, either of them that we want so I'm just going to undo that click on not biped let's actually find something cool so I'm just gonna pick a game character and click and directly here you can see we have this working for us the only problem I have with this is uh, in as much as this is an amazing amazing toolkit to have believe me by a long shot this is awesome I would have really loved the idea if this can have some sort of menu where you can simply switch this from being a cut rig to a biped or from a biped to a joint system it will make a lot of sense for me and I guess a lot of people will also appreciate it a lot, especially when you want to transfer motions from one of them to the next. I think this is going to help a lot. So finally, let's talk about blend shapes. All right, so with our model imported right inside here, the head model which we use for a project, you can check that project out, how you can create free models. I actually, I'm going to put the link in the description just in case so you don't get to stress to find these things out for yourself. So what I'm going to do now is I'm grabbing this object and in 3D Studio Max, there is something called a morpher. All right, so let me actually delete this that we have there so I can show you guys how you can add this up for yourself. So 3D Studio Max actually works with modifier. So you get to select this, come all the way down here and you need to look for the word morpher. All right, so you use the morpher to actually create blend shape. My only, only problem with this is it is tedious in the sense that for every single object you need to make, this is like very old. So for every single uh, shape you need to make, you need to actually move them one after the other, like make one blend shape another blend shape another blend shape another blend shape and for you to actually mirror this blend shape is also another problem altogether right you either need a super script to do that or you have to find a way to actually manipulate and run through but morpha is what you use and for this morpha let's say you want to make a simple smile directly from here you need to jump back to this part have this object selected select a certain part of the object let's say i get this really really fine Okay, let's say I have this part selected properly. I need to scroll all the way down and turn on soft selection. So here in 3D Studio Max, once you have this object selected and you want this to actually respect just this part, soft selection, you need to click on edge distance and from edge distance, you can now start spreading this all the way 
out so with this here you would be able to you know kind of control this but this means you have to do this for every individual object that exists here in 3d studio max meanwhile let's go over to maya and switch things up a little bit and see how this thing actually works all right so we have maya open let me just go ahead and import this model right in so let's bring this model here all right so we have this model here i would also like to turn on the the textures so we can see the textures the same way we could look at the textures here in 3d studio max so we can see that and yeah and this is the texture here in maya and we have it everything still looks bling like and we have this here next thing which i would like to do is to actually talk about the the blend shape so how this blend shape thing works is super simple i mean here in maya so for maya if you want to make blend shape you have to go over to uh window then within this part i'm not there within the animation tab you would need to go over to the shape editor so with the shape editor open let me actually grab this because it's on the other side of my screen all right i think i am grabbing okay cool so with the shape editor open and you want to create a blend shape all you need to do is click on create blend shape and this is there next thing which you need to do is just click on add target and from here you can go ahead and start sculpting the targets that you want so for this example let's say i want to use the simple move tool to actually move a certain part of our character's face and at this point you do not need the soft selection i kind of think that the uh, process that you use in 3d studio max is a little bit obsolete these days because not everybody actually does that so you can use this to actually uh, give your character some sort of smile let's say we want him to smile at this point we have to name this properly though so this could be the character smiling and once you're done you can turn edit off and you can actually slide this up and down to see what you have if you want to make a mirror of something like this you need to right click and actually let's start off with doing a simple uh duplicate i think that would be best for us so i'm just going to have this and duplicate this object and now turn this down right click and simply flip this target so you have this object smiling there and you have this one smiling here you can still choose to actually mirror this particular object by having it and you know hitting the mirror and you have actually flipped this or mirrored it to the other side but right now we don't want to do that so we can keep this as it is another cool feature that exists in maya when it comes to blend shape is you can have two objects selected and you can have them at their peak so when this character is uh when this character is smiling like this we would like this part of the mouth to be a little bit lower you can go through and add a combination target so a combination target simply means that anytime these two objects are turned on or anytime these two blend shapes are high we can go through and make changes here. So I'm just going to increase the brush size and slightly bring this a little bit lower. Now he looks a bit weird, don't he? Aha. Uh -huh. Now he looks a bit weird, doesn't he? All right, so now we have this dude smiling very uh, badly and we can turn this down. So with one object, we have this. With a combination set, we have this. One combination, one combination. All right, time for verdict. I would like you guys to tell me what you think about these individual apps. These are the, like the very basic stuff that has to do with rigging for this app. And just before I forget, I would like to show you guys the constraint. All right, so in 3D Studio Max, we have, uh, if you click the animation, we have the transform constraint, which is uh, completely close to, or this is exactly what parent constraint is in Maya. Then we have position constraint, which is the point constraint uh, or position constraint. Uh, we also have the rotation constraint, which is the same thing with Maya. We have the uh, scale constraint, which is also the same thing in Maya. So basically, they have a couple of constraints that are similar. And in Maya, you have a little bit more constraints that you can work with. So if I click on constraint, you know, you get to find uh, a couple more constraints here. So this is it, guys. Tell me which of these apps that you think is the best at what. I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section. This is supposed to be a simple tutorial Tuesday. But then I would actually thought it would make sense to actually switch things up so that you guys on the other side of the screen would understand how things work in individual apps. So there is no app that is better than. I only think that when it comes to blend shape, Maya actually beats 3D Studio Max down. And when it comes to things like the joints, 
3D Studio Max has way more varieties of rigging techniques that you can use, contrary to Maya, that actually has one solid means of rigging. For the most part, I actually think that 3D Studio Max having those complex means, uh, those complex methods would be a good thing if they are all integrated as one unified system, which on the other hand would make a lot of sense if you're rigging in 3D Studio Max, but if you're not rigging in 3D Studio Max, then I think you, maybe you can just find one of them and just master that. And this would actually limit you in certain cases. Like if you're using things like the biped, it might limit you when you're trying to export to things like motion builder or apps that actually receives joints as their means of a binding object. Another thing is the reaction manager kind of makes a lot of sense, especially if you're very key on just you know moving that graph editor trying to make sure that your motion moves smoothly i wish 3d studio max accepts multiple objects at the same time or multiple parameters at the same time and i also wish maya actually has the graph when it comes to parenting i also wish 3d studio max has a shortcut key the same way maya has a shortcut key and the attribute editor kind of work similar now there is something else about maya that 3d studio max kind of have but I think it's way more better when you get to work with Maya. The idea that you can tie things to expressions and at the same time tie them to sets and at the same time tie them to connection editor. It makes a lot of sense and with that note there that exists in Maya, it gives you some room for complexity, which I guess makes a lot of people actually use that app for animation more than they use it for 3D Studio Max. And I would like to know what you guys think about this. Tell me what your thoughts about this particular stuff that we've been looking at is in the comment section. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the like button, turn on notifications, share this with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications. So you will be the first to know once we release a new video. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, tips and tricks, tutorial Tuesday, free Friday, things like this. Peace.